it's Lorianne Sheldrick, the Contagiously Positive Girl. Welcome to my kitchen. So today I'm giving you a fun tutorial on what to do with all of those tomatoes, whether they're, they've been fully ripened or they're not quite ripe. So I'll just give you an example. So these are not from my garden. My garden didn't do so well this year, so, but my mom's garden did amazing. But now I have this massive bushel of tomatoes to deal with, plus a basket. So I need to be able to preserve them. So this super red one here is incredibly ripe. It is all ready to go. This one here, not quite ripened yet. You can, of course, leave it on the windowsill and it will ripen if you want to eat it raw. However, if you're using up your tomatoes, to make a sauce, I'm gonna show you how to do that today so that you can just throw them into a mason jar, seal it up, and then you're all ready to go the next time you want to make a pasta sauce. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to quarter every single one of these tomatoes. And once they are quartered, we're gonna throw them onto a cookie sheet or cookie sheets. So before you start doing that, preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we are going to slow roast these before putting them into our mason jars. So go and do that, go quarter your tomatoes, go turn on your oven and I will show you what to do next. Okay, so all my tomatoes are quartered and on the baking sheet and I still have probably three more cookie sheets um, to get through before I use all the tomatoes. So that's my mom had a bumper crop of tomatoes. So now what you're gonna do, now they're all quartered and they're evenly spread out, you're gonna take extra virgin olive oil and just drizzle that generously all across the tomatoes. Don't worry about it being fancy. Uh, black pepper, you don't have to. I just like a little cracked pepper. It's just going into the jar. You're going to use it for sauce and stuff, so you can spice it up whatever you make the recipe. You don't have to do all that now, but I am. Just adding a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of coriander. I put the coriander seeds into a pepper shaker so that they're whole and then I keep them. And then what you want is definitely sea salt. So the sea salt will help pull out all of those juices from the tomatoes, especially the ones that haven't fully ripened yet. If you're hearing some scratching in the background, that would be my dog trying to get into the dishwasher because that's a new fascination is licking the plates in the dishwasher. So you're gonna give a generous amount Keep pinching the sea salt until you hit every single tomato. If you want, just a touch little bonus, you can add a little bit of acid. It can be some lemon juice, just drizzle that over. Again, it will just get those flavors to all come out. Or a touch of balsamic vinegar, but it's not necessary. If you have it on hand, then by all means, and by a touch, I mean just drizzle it on. So now, either with your hands or just with a couple of spoons, Mix this all up and you're going to throw it in the oven and I'll come back and show you how, what it looks like and we'll put this into a big bowl and we'll mash it all up and we'll throw it into our dryers while it's hot so we can get a good seal. This will take probably at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, probably about 30 to 45 minutes, but I'll give you the exact time whenever we're done. So the next steps to doing this super, super easy, okay? So I have my pan here, which I will show you. It's been an hour, by the way. I think because I had it on a lower temperature than normal, these have been an hour roasting. So it's hard for you to see here. I'll do a little zoom in shot for you, but you'll know they're ready when the skin starts to come off and they're really soft. So what we're going to do now is put them in a large bowl and we're going to mash them up with a just a very simple potato masher. And then we're going to put them into our clean mason jars 
put the chops on and wait for it to seal. Now you wanna do this while it's hot, otherwise you won't get that tight seal and it will go bad. So let me show you what this all looks like. I'll do a little zoom in for you. So here they are, and as you can see, all those juices, you can tell that they're ready. They're really soft, they mash up really easily. That's how you know they're ready to go. And if you wanna do this faster, then by all means, turn the heat up, but it is nice when they're slow roasted, because you don't necessarily want it to be like super cooked or get any burnt edges, you just, want it to slow roast so all those juices look at the juices that's what you want right that's like the essence of it and if you put the heat too hot you're not going to get that so let's throw this into a bowl we'll mash it up and we'll put them into mason jars so really easily big bowl mash it up until it's all done and looks like what you would buy in a store, canned tomatoes. So here you go everyone, homemade tomatoes. So all ready to go whenever you make your sauce, it's all done, just add your spices, make whatever sauce you want, and you have your own jarred tomatoes. No waste, even the ones that haven't fully ripened yet have been thrown in here. Once you put the salt and a little balsamic and the oil and you slow roast them, it releases all those juices and it doesn't really matter anyway. So there you go. Bon appetit.